So last time we talked about uh, basically polymers can behave as non-Newtonian fluids, um, which in essence means that our viscosity will change the function of our strain rate or our total uh, shear strain as well. So we want to figure out what's kind of happening uh, in our, what's, you know, what leads to this kind of non-Newtonian behavior. So let's start out with just a typical scenario. We have a polymer, uh, we add some liquid solvent, uh, and we want to kind of see how this is going to affect viscosity, or we want to measure viscosity. So we are going to determine this using the Stokes law, and the viscosity of our solution will scale and change the molecular weight, um, and we're going to see these two different scaling regimes. Uh, we know that molecular weight also scales with N. Um, so we're going to see two different scaling uh, behaviors in terms of how the viscosity changes uh, as a function of N or the molecular weight, the freely drain regime and the non-drain regime. So that's going to lead to the non-Newtonian behavior that we've talked about previously. So hopefully people have uh, heard about or encountered the Einstein-Stokes equation before, aside from in the previous video. So let's start to think about um, a model that physicists always love, which is a sphere falling through some fluid with some viscosity eta naught at some velocity v. So the viscous force that is going to act on this sphere, this kind of perfect sphere that's falling, you can kind of see here. So our sphere is falling here with some velocity. It says some radius rs here. And then there's going to be some force that's opposing it, some viscous drag. And there's some fluid with some eta naught there. So our viscous force that's kind of pushing here, you'll see this as f viscous. You can also see this as our drag force. Um, you'll kind of see this more often. It's just going to be this friction factor F times my uh, the velocity of that falling you know sphere. So F's friction vector solution. Um, again, this is a very similar to our shear stress, right? So we saw that previously our shear stress was our viscosity times our shear strain. This is basically kind of like a velocity. F viscous is kind of like a four. Again, very very similar um, kind of relationship here. Um, so we should expect that our Viscous force, our friction factor, is going to scale, uh, should scale similarly. Uh, so our shear, our viscosity, and our viscous, uh, our friction factor F should behave similarly. That's what's, you know, again, in this equation here, just like in this equation, that's equivalently our eta. So if we find how F, we want to figure out an equation how our friction factor, how does that scale with N, and then we know that's proportional to molecular weight as well. So. Let's kind of uh, go ahead and, uh, luckily for us, um, Stokes and Einstein uh, in 1851, they solved for this friction factor already, and they gave us uh, this expression with some pretty complex math, but we don't need to go into that. Uh, so we know our friction factor is just going to be 6 pi eta naught, so the viscosity of our fluid, times the radius of our sphere. So, uh, again, FD, drag force, Stokes drag force, I'll probably refer to that most often, so the Stokes drag, drag force is what we're going to be dealing with. Now, the problem that we run into, again, you know, physicists, you know, their models are always nice. They could play around with, uh, you know, idealized spheres, but we live in the real, real world of polymers. So um, we can approximate the shape of our coiled polymer as a sphere, but we cannot always, depending on the state of our polymer, approximate it as a solid sphere. So we are going to have two size extremes or two regimes that we have to consider. So one is the non-draining regime. So in the non-draining regime, the polymer is coiled into one impenetrable sphere where fluid cannot pass. So it is non-draining. In the non-draining regime, we can model our polymer as like a solid sphere. In the freely draining regime, our polymer is going to be a little more extended and we cannot treat it as, again, we're, we could treat the shape as a sphere with some radius rs, but we cannot um, assume that it is a solid sphere. Basically, we're going to see that the solvent is going to be able to pass through this part, this uh, uh, polymer. Whereas here, it's so tightly coiled that fluid will not be able to flow through it. So if, I have, if I'm in my non-draining regime, so let's just clarify, freely draining regime, polymer is permeable to solvent. And in this case, the polymer is composed of a large number of small spheres, monomers. So you can kind of treat it like in the non-draining regime. We basically, you're looking at your coiled polymer here, like a single monomer unit. And then if I flow fluid through here, the fluid is able to pass here, here, but then it's shut off there. In my freely drain regime, I have a polymer that's a little bit more extended like this. Again, it's composed of these different monomer units with these little spheres here. Again, it's some large RS as well. So again, the total size, but it's composed of these little monomer units, these monomer spheres. And as I flow my fluid through here, all that's going to happen is it's going to pass on the sides as usual, 
but then the magnitude here is going to get a little bit shorter. So there's going to be some screening, but fluid can flow through this. So it is not an impenetrable sphere or a solid sphere in the freely draining case. And that's going to have um, each of those monomers is going to have some uh, basically coefficient where it drags some of the, uh, it's going to interact with that fluid and it's going to be a little bit more viscous because it's going to scale with essentially fluids going to hit each one of these monomers. Whereas here, it's only going to hit kind of like those outer shell of monomers. But we're going to get into that in just a bit. That's kind of the physical picture that we're dealing with here. So uh, a nice kind of schematic of that is given in our, uh, I mean, I like to think of it as a nice schematic. So <laughs> uh, this is our kind of non-draining regime. We're going to come back to this slide as well. But again, focus on this is where the flow field or the fluid, again, can't penetrate here. Freely draining can penetrate. So let's go back. Actually, we'll keep it on this. Uh, so let's go back to our notes and let's go ahead and first, actually, we're going to end it here. And next time we're going to get into the non-draining regime and then we'll talk about the free draining regime and we'll get some scaling parameters. So uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks.